Okay, now the next symptom is one of my favourites. It's a good one. It's the physical changes. You may lighten up literally by losing weight, partly because your appetite your appetite changes. Um, and the other reason is that your light body is coming in. You're, you're changing the way your DNA is built and how your body is built is changing and you you literally become lighter it becomes a bit easier to lose weight you have more energy you naturally crave a healthier diet you will likely feel less hungry less need to eat because you're bored um, you may suddenly be totally disinterested in processed food you may crave a raw fruit and vegetable based diet you may choose to become vegan or vegetarian the concept of meat may suddenly repulse you even spasmodically um, this can sometimes be actually just on the meat thing I could talk quite a lot about this but I won't um, sometimes simply for the reason of ingesting another animal's fear is enough for your sensitive energy levels to absorb that and make you upset because not because you've eaten meat but because the the beast you have eaten was not feeling too good <laughs> at the time of death and has harbored a lot of energy as everything has has energy and it's contained um, so think about think about the energy of animals and, and what you're willing to put into your own energy field. So um, as a result of your different cravings and diet change, your energy levels and your whole outlook on the world, you are going to lighten up literally. Your light body is growing and you may even start looking a bit younger. Your skin may change a little bit. It might become smoother or more luminous somehow your eyes may become clearer as well and you'll just feel better you might walk taller people might just say wow you look really well and you'll say thank you I feel great because I am a light worker going through spiritual awakening <laughs> okay so as part of this as well your senses are suddenly starting to work a little bit in overdrive your hearing may become super fine tuned in your vision you may feel like a wolverine <laughs> um, your sense of smell you will also see things mainly I think it's with your vision and hearing you're going to experience things some of you will experience a difference in touch you may feel someone and feel their energy quite distinctly um, and understand if there is a pain or or happiness with a particular person immediately or by touching objects of theirs um, and that is a gift worth exploring if you find that that happens um, what is very common is with our vision we'll start seeing sparkles of light in a room it might just be one little pin of light right in front of us um, you may see a lot of sparkles around people particularly people's head you may see big shifts of light move through a room. It can be any colour. It can be flash like lightning. It can be small. It can be big. It's usually very quick where with the larger shifts of light, sometimes very quick and you're not sure if you actually saw it or not, but it happens so often that you, <laughs> you know you saw it and you're not going crazy. And it's often in the daytime, often when you're not expecting it. You might be at work and you're in a meeting and talking to someone and then this big white light travels behind them and you're trying to keep a straight face um, yeah so the sparkles are lovely um, I will never get used to sparkles I still see them it's been 10 years and they tend to come up when I'm doing something creative or, or good for me or things I know that keep me on my particular path and journey It'd be like a little tiny flashlight of fairy size flashlight I suppose and it's quite a beautiful thing um, so 
So that's a lovely symptom and I hope you enjoy that and don't think there's something wrong with you there either. Um, the hearing, as I mentioned before, is sometimes a ringing in the ears and sometimes it can get very loud. As I also mentioned before, is you, you do have some control here. You can ask for it to be turned down and um, it, it will be turned down or it will go away. Um, with all of this, you, you are in control and you can ask for things to happen and they will. You need to have complete faith that they will. With um, your hearing, well, this is something very interesting. Actually, I'll, I'll spend a little bit of time on this. You may hear your name being called. You may be woken up by someone saying your name. It may not be your name. It may be a name. And you may quickly realize that it's your soul's name and the name that you love and the name that feels like you really are being called when it is spoken. And that's your soul name. And if you feel inclined to change your name to that name, go for it. I think it's the best thing you can do. It locks you firmly on the path. Um, that did happen to me. I was woken frequently in the night with a male voice saying, Willow! <laughs> wake up what um, I wasn't born willow and I would all always in my dreams be called willow um, willow white raven in fact and I would have birds come and talk to me <clears throat> white ravens black ravens quizzing me and really you know and there'd always be this white talking cat I'm not sure what that's about yet but her name was flame and um, I then got a white cat and named her Flame, of course, thinking that was the, <laughs> the answer to everything. This cat would be able to tell me so much, but it, it turned out she wasn't very interested in telling me much at all. Oh, well, that's all right. So, look, if you, were, if you feel that the name you were given at birth isn't your name on a spiritual or soul level of who you're becoming, it's okay to change it. And, or even just to call yourself that name in your inner circle or when you're doing your spiritual practice. It, it's a lovely thing to acknowledge. Okay, here's another favourite symptom. I still enjoy this, is you will get signs, a lot of them, even more if you ask for more signs. They're seemingly on tap when you need them. There's going to be signs along the way until you start noticing your guides are going to lay things out in front of you. You're going to think, oh, that's a coincidence, that's weird. Um, until you go, wow, that's beautiful, thank you. You will know it is a particular sign and there'll be usually one every day or every few days, sometimes as many in one day when there's a lot going on, which is really cool. Now these signs could be particular insects or birds or animals appearing in your life. It may be an image of an animal that you see on TV and then on a billboard and then in a magazine and you, you note it. Where normally on another day you may not have noticed this same animal coming up but these are signs they put in front of you and you out of a whole magazine might notice one picture and what's in that picture may become a repetitive theme in the coming days and that's your sign and it can be a prompt to look into the spiritual meaning of that sign. Um, there's a lot of information available now thanks to the internet and there's a lot of brilliant books that define the meaning of many signs if you just can't figure it out what it is if it's a bit too cryptic um, because sometimes you'll see a sign and you know what it is it's because it has a personal story and impact for you. Um, I think feathers and coins are brilliant. Feathers for me would show up nearly every day, sometimes beyond reason, like <laughs> in a city car park stepping out of my car and there's a, a, a big hawk feather, which I, I have here hanging up, um, and then the next day a big crow feather, and then the next day I'm feeling a bit down and actually ask my guides and angels to to show me a feather as a sign because I'm feeling alone and I'm walking through the bush and found a beautiful white feather on the path and you just feel special when that happens, it's really nice. 
Um, the other big thing is numbers. Um, you may be experiencing a lot of double digit numbers. You might be looking at the clock at 1111. Um, I think that's a bit of phenomena that a lot of people are experiencing the 1111. Um, but these numbers can, the double digits, they'll show up at the petrol pump on receipts, on your clock, on signs, on phone numbers, you'll just become possibly a bit of a double digit addict for a while, <laughs> which um, it happens, you, you get through it, but sometimes you just need a bit of reassurance that things are on track and you're looking for numbers and they're always there. You may also see a repetition in words on, on signs or in books you may hear words, you may dream words, you may wake up with an idea or a thought um, or a word and it's really up to you to pursue that and research it further and see where that leads you because you're pulling on a thread and it's going to lead you to somewhere that you're meant to, meant to experience or see. One of the main symptoms of spiritual awakening is that you begin to see the world with new eyes, the fragility and strength of all around you and the people and the environment and animals and our infrastructure all looks super clear to you. Um, you'll have a deep feeling of love and acceptance for things. It'll, it'll come to you, it'll creep in slowly or sometimes quickly for others. And sometimes things can become deeply distressing for you. And you need to identify what these things are and eradicate them from your life wherever possible or else you will be a blithering mess all the time because you become so sensitive to others hurt. Too much rubbish, too much violence, too much aggression. It's, it is there to overwhelm the senses, to hypnotise you and you will see as your consciousness lifts that you don't want to be part of that game anymore and you'll start to pull back and start choosing what goes into your mind. You're sensitive, a bit like a child. You wouldn't let a young child watch a violent film. Well, your soul is a bit the same at the moment. It's come out into the world. It's super sensitive. It's open to everything and your senses are heightened. You don't need violence, fear, rage and anger.